musician, Mr. Charles McGetty. Hey! Hello, hello. Oh, God. God, it's great to look down into this audience. I, f I feel so at home. Lots of grey hair. <laughs> and bald people. Some of the men are bald as well. Have you all got your tickets for Saturday? Does anybody remember the last time Leitrim were in Croke Park? We were there, we got there at about 12 o'clock because we wanted to experience the full thing and we had the sandwiches and the buns and the flask of tea and the whole kit and caboodle. And it was wonderful to watch the place fill up. You know, all there were three matches, so six teams that particular day. And I'll never forget it. There were 79,000 people there in the end. And it was like a big jigsaw puzzle watching Croke Park fill up, you know. And just before the match started, I just noticed there was an empty seat beside me. I couldn't believe it, all these people were, they were buying tickets for 200 euros outside the match. And I got talking to the fellow over in the next seat, it turns out he was from Kiev. And I said, it's a holy terror, isn't it, to think that somebody didn't bother their arse coming and taking their seat here. Oh no, he says, as a matter of fact, that's my seat, myself and the wife. We have a season tickets here, we can come to everything, no matter what it is, we can go to anything at all. Like Garth Brooks or Neil Diamond or All Ireland, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, I said she couldn't come today, and I said, why is that? Oh, she died. Well, I put the, I, I kind of dampened the whole day, you know. I, kind of, she, I said, could you not have given the ticket to some of your relations or friends? Oh, no, I said, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> That's Calvin for you, isn't it? Well, I see a few distressed faces. Mind you, I was looking at Paul there on that screen. He's only in Leitrim for about half an hour and he suddenly looks like he's after being in the Bahamas. Did you see him on that screen? Have you seen yourself? But there are a few distressed looking people down there. Obviously, they're the married people. Any married people down there? Somebody said marriage is like a, a really good meal with the dessert at the beginning. <laughs> But I I'm tend to kind of believe that, uh, you know, a lot of people would tell you that, that married people live longer. Somebody else says it only seems longer. <laughs> and I wrote this little song, and you might like to sing along with it. It's not too hard. It's about my own marriage. I'm married for 47 years now to the same woman. I think she deserves a round of applause. <laughs> But like every other marriage, it can be a pain in the arse sometimes, you know. Here's the chorus. That's how it is with you and me. We live our lives imperfectly. And though I love you totally, that's how it is with you and me. You want to try it? One, two, three, four. That's how it is with you and me. We live our lives imperfectly. We live our lives imperfectly. And though I love you totally, and though I love you totally, that's how it is. That's how it is with you and me. You keep changing like the weather. One day good, the next day better. I never know how you're going to be That's how it is with you and me One day hot, the next day colder I keep looking over my shoulder Sometimes you're really hard to see That's how it is with you and me Your turn that's how it is with you and me. We live our lives imperfectly. We live our lives imperfectly. And though I love you totally, that's how it is. That's how it is with you and me. Every day a different color. No one day like the other. Different song in a different key. That's how it is with you and me. That's
That's how it is with you and me. Well done, everyone. You know, uh, like everybody else, uh, I'm getting on now, 68 years of age. And uh, what really annoys me is that nobody says, Oui, wow, are you 68? No. Because, uh, and I wrote this song um, about that time, you know, when you suddenly realize and there's a lot of you down there. Anybody down there at all that remember? No, no, you wouldn't know what 68 feels like. No. I wrote this song when I turned 60. I'm a touching 60. I'm a turning gray. Well, I'm touching 60, and from here on in, it's downhill all the way. I'm a touching 60. I got news for you that before you realize it, you'll be touching 62. Well, it's hard to explain. I don't mean to complain, but something has happened to me. Cause I'm just at that stage, that peculiar age when the future is hard to see. Well, I've heard it said that it's all in your head that you're really as old as you feel. But when I look in the mirror and at what I see there, you know, it's getting kind of hard to conceal that I'm a touching 16. I'm a turning gray. I'm a touching 60. And from here on in, it's downhill all the way. I'm a touching 60. I got news for you that before you realize it, you'll be touching 62. You know, these nights when I get into bed, sometimes I'm beginning to wonder, is there more of me in the bedside locker that actually gets into the bed, you know? I remember one particularly very cold night I was after playing in Kerry and I arrived in about five in the morning and I get in behind herself in the bed. And I'm just nodding off to sleep and I get the nudge. What? What's wrong with you? Well, she says, times have changed. I remember you'd come in from a gig and the first thing you'd do was throw your arms around me in the bed. Oh God, I said, okay. And so I threw my arms around me in the bed. I'm just nodding off again. Another nudge, what? Remember, she says, when you used to put your nestle your chin up against the back of my neck. Oh, God. Right, so I nestled my chin up on it. And she says, remember then when, when you used to nibble my ear? Well, I was out of the bed like a shot. She says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to get my teeth. <laughs> laughing down here it'll happen to you one day too because my teeth are all gone I can't keep my hair on my belly is like a balloon and I cough and I choke from these things that I smoke you know I'm going to rack and room. well I used to be a guy with a twinkle in eye now they're all bloodshot and red and I've got to admit that when it comes down to it I do an awful lot of reading in bed I'm a touching 16 yeah, I'm a turning gray. Well, I'm a touching 60, and from here on in, it's downhill all the way. I'm a touching 60. I got news for you that before you realize it, you'll be touching 62. I'm after seeing, <laughs> I'm after seeing a fellow nudging, or a, a woman after nudging her husband there, she's, that's just like you. Don't worry. You know, my wife got worried about me because I just wasn't as interested in sex as I used to be. So she went up to the doctor. You know, our doctor, everybody knows Declan, don't you? He talks, he doesn't talk to you, he mumbles at you. You know. <laughs> were you're laughing too, I'll tell him. She says to him, you know, I'm worried about Charlie. He's just not interested in, you know, you're not interested in what? You know, Declan. He's not interested in sex anymore. Oh, she says, it's terrible. Says, Has he tried this Viagra? And she says, uh, what's that? We don't, we're very behind a bit in drum jambo, you know. He says, uh, well, it's just a drug. Oh, no, he'd never take drugs. Drink cocaine okay and everything, but not drugs. Don't tell him. Just some evening after the dinner, drop it into his cup of coffee or whatever it is and say nothing. Anyway, she went off and 
she was back a week later, a face on her like thunder. Well, how'd you get on? I did what you said, what? I put it into his coffee after the dinner. And but she said, we had the best sex we had in our entire life. Right there on the dinner table, she says. She says, what's wrong with that? We can never go back to that restaurant again. <laughs> I suppose things could be worse. You know, if I was a horse, they'd have put me down by now. And make no mistake, I'd be a big juicy steak on your dinner plate if I was a cow. So I took in my waist, but on a brave face, nothing's gonna put me down. So look out, world, and especially the girls, there's a dirty old man in town. I'm touching 16, I'm a turning gray. Well, I'm touching 60, and from here on in, it's downhill all the way. I'm a touching 60. I got news for you that before you realize it, you'll be touching 62. Thank you. Well, it's been great here. I'm going to finish off now with a medley of my greatest hit. And uh, what are you laughing at? How many hits have you had? <laughs> and uh, Paul's after saying there's a free sample of Viagra for everybody in the audience <laughs> well way back in <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's a young child <laughs> um, way back in 1994 Leitrim of course we all know won the uh, the uh, Connacht final but uh, they also had a share in winning the uh, Eurovision Song Contest as well it was a great old year for, for Leitrim so if you know this one, feel free to join in. I remember 62 I was 16 and so were you And we lived next door On the avenue Jerry Lee was big and Elvis too Blue jeans and blue suede shoes And we never knew What life held in store just wanted to rock and roll forevermore. We were very good. Rock and roll was all we did. And listening to those songs on the radio. Once upon a time Now we never seem to rock and roll Anymore Funny thing is uh, When you win the Eurovision Song Contest The first thing that happens is you become a legend in your own mind You know <laughs> but People in Leitrim are very quick to let you down You know <laughs> Even tonight I was wandering around out there uh, Before I came, came in And this woman kept coming up to me She said, do I know you from somewhere? You know I said, no, just leave me alone. You know. She kept coming back, you know, because you're very familiar looking. I know you're from somewhere, you know. And I said, um, maybe the television. I know, she said, I fell up the road, fixes our televisions. <laughs> now Johnny's in love with the girl next door. And Mary's down at the record store. They don't want to be us no more golden oldies golden oldies but we hardly speak too busy running to a different beat hard to understand but we were once like them how I wish we could find those rock and roll days again 
ready? The rock and roll kids, rock and roll was all we did. And listening to those songs on the radio. I was yours and you were mine. That was once upon a time. Now we never seem to rock and roll. upon a time now we never seem to rock and roll we just never seem to rock and roll anymore thank you very much enjoy yeah. the rest of your day. thank you Charlie McGettigan what a star great to see you my old friend brilliant you're buying a point later on <laughs> Isn't he brilliant, Lee? Give him another whack. And give him another whack on top of that to remind the Donegal crowd they're not getting him back. <laughs>